Um, my name is Alex Crockney Palace, and I am 29. And what are you doing right now to make the world a better place? Basically, what's your story? It's my story. Uh, so I am the executive director of the National Youth Rights Association. Um, myself and uh, you know our, our young you know board directors and chapter leaders, you know, many of whom are high school students, college students. Um, you know we lead this organization, and you know we work to defend the civil rights of young people in the United States. Um, it's an entirely new field um, that really looks at young people, uh, looks at teenagers as people, as citizens, as members of our society, not as property or not as problems. And what are some of the, uh, the programs you work on with, with Naira? Sure. Um, we, you know, uh, a lot of what we do is kind of done uh, at the grassroots level, grassroots organizing. Uh, you know, we try to help uh, young people, you know, organize in their own communities to, you know, uh, stop um, bad laws from passing and, you know, uh, get good laws uh, to, to get on the books. Um, but also just in general trying to educate the public about uh, young people and really um, get rid of the notion that, that youth are criminals or, um, you know, apathetic or, um, you know, incapable of, you know, uh, thinking and behaving like rational adults and, uh, you know, really presenting a positive view of youth as, you know, equal partners, as, you know, intelligent uh, members of our society that deserve all the respect and all the rights and all of the uh, dignity that, uh, that adults enjoy. And what are some of the success stories of, of things you've worked on to defend youth civil rights? Sure. Um, you know, we have taken on a number of different campaigns. Um, you know, we've worked to, you know, lower the drinking age uh, in Vermont. We've worked to lower the voting age in, in California and, and many other states around the country. Uh, we've repealed a number of curfew laws um, around the country. Um, just. Uh, just a recent uh, um, uh, victory of ours or campaign of ours, um, actually two, just in the last uh, in the last month. Um, you know, we worked to um, strike down a discriminatory mosquito device in Washington D.C. Um, that targeted specifically targeted young people and emitted a high-pitched tone that only young people could hear. Um, basically, the developers had the the opinion that youth were pests and nuisances and trying to drive them away like pests with a device called the Mosquito, and, uh, you know, our members filed complaints, and, uh, you know, we got that uh, device taken down. Uh, we also have been working with uh, the ACLU and the National Coalition Against Censorship and a number of or other organizations um, to um, weigh in on the Schwarzenegger v. EMA um, Supreme Court case. Um, this court case uh, deals with a California law um, that made it illegal for individuals under 18 to purchase uh, some video, video games and uh, it's being challenged on First Amendment grounds. Um, you know, we believe that the law is un unconstitutional. We filed an amicus brief, and uh, then just, uh, just a week ago uh, today, uh, we held a rally in front of the Supreme Court, um, you know, uh, campaigning for uh, free speech um, and also for uh, voting rights for young people. Great. Um, and what got you into this, this sphere of youth rights? What inspired you? Sure. Well, growing up, um, you know, I guess like any other teenager, you know, I was uh, confronted with um, just a multitude of frustrations. You know, my parents, my teachers, my, you know, community leaders, you know, adults in my life, um, they didn't see me as an equal. They didn't see me as a person, really. You know, I was, um, you know, more of, a, more of a, a, an issue, more of a problem to be dealt with as opposed to a person to be related to. And, um, most teenagers, you know, uh, who experience that, and you know, all of them do, um, they get frustrated, they lash out, they, you know, either turn inward and, you know, uh, take on self-destructive behavior, or they, you know, uh, lash out and, you know, do criminal activity. Um, you know, I started thinking about it um, not as, you know, this is something horrible is being done to me. I started thinking about it as this is something systemic. This is something that affects all young people. This is. Um, a form of discrimination like racism, like sexism, like you know heterosexism, like other um, you know forms of discrimination that we have in this country, and you know young people are suffering from ageism, from age discrimination. And I started writing about this uh, this term for my school newspaper, and I had never heard the term before. I thought I made it up. Um, I actually ended up spelling it wrong, um, but uh, it was definitely a a new idea that I was, you know, kind of putting forward and really putting words to, 
Um, and then senior year in high school, I uh, discovered uh, you know kind of a practical um, thing for me to do, um, and I found there are businesses in my hometown, in Michigan, um, that discriminated on the basis of age. They held they had stores signs up in their uh, stores saying no more than one student allowed inside at any one time. And there was no justification for this. Basically, these shop owners believed that teens were all troublemakers, were all you know criminals, were all going to come in and steal uh, things from their store. Um, and they created this policy basically discriminating against youth on the idea that they'll be able to watch them, you know, if there's only one in the store at any one time. Um, and I, you know, knew immediately this was wrong. Uh, this was similar to uh, kind of business discrimination, you know, uh, around the country and, you know, in, in the South in previous decades. And, you know, I went and I waged a one-man campaign to uh, take down these uh, discriminatory signs at these businesses. And I spoke to the city council, you know, I got them involved. I actually found a law in Michigan that made this illegal. And uh, first, my first step was I went to the businesses and I explained to them, you know, this was, you know, this is what the law says, you know, this is what your policy is. It's clearly violating the law. I gave them copies of the law. Um, but since I was 17, you know, they didn't, they didn't care. They were like, get out of my store, you punk kid. And, uh, you know, they yelled at me. They, you know, uh, told me to leave. Um, but after I brought in, you know, the, the authorities from the city, um, they changed their tune and they all took down their, their signs and, you know, it was a, it was a great victory. Um, and that's, you know, when I realized that this is a, uh, not only a systemic problem and a big problem that needs to be solved, but it's a solvable problem and it's something that, you know, with action and with organization and with some passion, um, we can really make a difference. And what are some ways that your work has kind of taken you across traditional boundaries and how you've had to work across those to get things done? Across traditional boundaries. Um, everything that we do crosses traditional boundaries. Um, just the, the very idea that young people uh, have their own opinions and can speak you know, freely of their own opinions and not, um, you know, not be uh, held in, in you know, restricted to training wheels. You know, a lot of uh, adults kind of see youth as a time of preparation or a time of you know, one day you'll be a leader, one day you know, you'll, you'll have a say, one day you know, you'll be able to do something. Um, so the very notion that, you know, young people now, today, can take on uh, the status quo and can challenge, um, you know, the, the things that, that strike them. Um, this is, you know, very much challenging um, kind of all traditional views of youth, all traditional um, uh, conceptions of, you know, what it means to be a young person. Um, and, you know, just the, and the, the, the mission, you know, that challenges the idea of, you know, young people as, as children and as property, I think, is very... Um, uh, revolutionary, and that's definitely something that we've, uh, you know, uh, been working on. And I'm sure you have a lot of answers to this next question, but what are some of the challenges facing young people in our generation? Some of the biggest, most pressing ones, you think? Um, just kind of the, the broad, the broad idea of, um, you know, the young people being told that they, you know, aren't people, and that they should wait until they become people magically at, uh, at 18 or 21. And I think that young people have a huge amount of passion, a huge amount of insight, a huge amount of um, talent that I think is currently being squandered. And I think that uh, unless we, you know, fully welcome them into our society, you know, all of this um, ability is going to waste um, because young people are not being, you know, uh, given leadership now and given, you know, opportunity to lead and succeed yeah. now. And, you know, challenging that notion, that conception of youth, um, it's very challenging and uh, very difficult. And the last question is, what advice do you have for a young person who wants to get more involved in their communities or the political process or youth mobilization? You know, you did it at a young age. What would you tell them? Don't give up. Um, it's, it's anything you want to do in life, um, whether it's, you know, uh, youth activism or anything. Um, it takes persistence and it takes uh, time and it takes dedication. Um, things are going to be difficult and things are going to be uh, tough, but um, you need to, to keep at it, and if uh, you know the cause is worthwhile, um, you definitely need to you know do what it takes uh, to, to make it happen. And you know, young people are suffering from ageism, from age discrimination. And I started writing about this uh, this term for my school newspaper, and I'd never heard the term before. I thought I made it up. Um, I actually ended up spelling it wrong, um, but uh, it was definitely a a new idea that I was, you know, kind of putting forward and really putting words to, 
Um, and then senior year in high school, I uh, discovered uh, you know kind of a practical um, thing for me to do, um, and I found there are businesses in my hometown, Michigan, um, that discriminated on the basis of age. They held they had stores signs up in their uh, stores saying no more than one student allowed inside at any one time. And there was no justification for this. Basically, these shop owners believed that teens were all troublemakers, were all you know criminals, were all going to come in and steal uh, things from their store. Um, and they created this policy basically discriminating against youth on the idea that they'll be able to watch them, you know, if there's only one in the store at any one time. Um, and I, you know, knew immediately this was wrong. Uh, this was similar to uh, kind of business discrimination, you know, uh, around the country and, you know, in, in the South in previous decades. And, you know, I went and I waged a one-man campaign to uh, take down these uh, discriminatory signs of these businesses. And I spoke to the city council, you know, I got them involved, I actually found a law in Michigan that made this illegal, and uh, first, my first step was I went to the businesses and I explained to them, you know, this was, you know, this is what the law says, you know, this is what your policy is, it's clearly violating the law, I gave them copies of the law, um, but since I was 17, you know, they didn't, they didn't care, they were like, get out of my store, you punk kid, and, uh, you know, they yelled at me, they, you know, uh, told me to leave. Um, but after I brought in, you know, the, the authorities from the city, um, they changed their tune and they all took down their, their signs and, you know, it was a, it was a great victory. Um, and that's, you know, when I realized that this is a, uh, not only a systemic problem and a big problem that needs to be solved, but it's a solvable problem and it's something that, you know, with action and with organization and with some passion, um, we can really make a difference. And what are some ways that your work has kind of taken you across traditional boundaries and how you've had to work across those to get things done? Across traditional boundaries. Um, everything that we do crosses traditional boundaries. Um, just the, the very idea that young people uh, have their own opinions and can speak you know, freely of their own opinions and not, um, you know, not be uh, held in, in you know, restricted to training wheels, you know, a lot of uh, adults kind of see youth as a time of preparation or a time of, you know, one day you'll be a leader, one day, you know, you'll, you'll have a say, one day, you know, you'll be able to do something. Um, so the very notion that, you know, young people now, today, can take on uh, the status quo and can challenge, um, you know, the, the things that, that strike them. Um, this is, you know, very much challenging um, kind of all traditional views of youth, all traditional um, uh, conceptions of you know what it means to be a young person, um, and you know just the and the, the the mission you know the challenges the idea of you know young people as as children and as property I think is very um, uh, revolutionary and it's definitely something that we've uh, you know uh, been working on. And I'm sure you have a lot of answers to this next question, but what are some of the challenges facing young people in our generation? Some of the biggest, most pressing ones, you think? Um, just. Kind of the, the broad the broad idea of um, you know the young people being told that they you know aren't people and that they should wait until they become people magically at uh, at eighteen or twenty one and I think that young people have a huge amount of passion a huge amount of insight a huge amount of um, talent that I think is currently being squandered and I think that uh, unless we you know fully welcome them into our society. You know, all of this um, ability is going to waste um, because young people are not being, you know, uh, given leadership now and given you know opportunity to lead and succeed yeah. now. And you know, challenging that notion, that conception of youth, um, is very challenging and uh, uh, very difficult. And the last question is: What advice do you have for a young person who wants to get more involved in their communities or the political process or youth mobilization? You know, you did it at a young age. What would you tell them? Don't give up. Um, it's it's anything you want to do in life, um, whether it's you know uh, youth activism or anything. Um, it takes persistence and it takes uh, time and it takes dedication. Um, things are going to be difficult and things are going to be uh, tough, but um, you need to, to keep at it. And if uh, you know the cause is worthwhile, um, you definitely need to you know do what it takes uh, to to make it happen.